Yeah, I had a big fear of being buried alive when I was a little kid, so it's like, oh, burn me. So like, even if you guys, burn me alive. If you guys, if I'm you not guys, afraid of being burned alive. If you guys aren't sure that I'm dead, definitely stick me in the oven. <laughs> like, yeah. do not bury me. I think we made it. The situation where all of us are going to be met with not being sure you're dead or not. <laughs> okay, for eight days. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like, like, I might bury like, him. If we're ever not sure that. that you're dead, I hope that one of us has called a doctor at some point. Just There's been a hospital involved. But now I've like owned all of those feelings. Yeah. Like, like even with Blake earlier, I'm like, I'm a, I'm, I feel FOMO for not going to TIFF, but I'm like, I'm okay with it. I don't, I'm not mad. But like, I, yeah. and when I'm on set, I'm like, I'm excited to be here. And when someone's like shoots me down with their like jadedness, I'm like, I don't mm. need you around mm. me. I'm good. I'll you just know, I not hang out. Arnold Schwarzenegger level positivity, where it's like, if you aren't positive, you're out. It makes you leave you're the room. Out, you're not in the room. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, he yeah. said he does not let negativity into the room with him. So he'll literally, if you're being negative, he'd be like, I won't do the voice, but I won't. Do the <laughs> voice. Do the, do the voice. voice. I did not have sex. No, wrong voice. <laughs> wrong 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 wrong. No, uh, you know, you have to leave the room. <laughs> he, he like he lets you come back with a solution. He's like, you can be mad at the problem. This is hurting his beautiful quote. <laughs> uh, bad impression. Yeah, you can, you can like, okay, you can be mad. You can be upset. Go leave the room. Come back around me when you have a positive solution. Do can you do Schwarzenegger doing Bill Clinton's line? I did not have sex with her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's good, right? Yeah, that's perfect it. impression. I think, you, I think you've nailed it. Yeah. Um, something you said there. Uh, having a kid. Uh, oh no, maybe it's nothing. I don't know. It's just my ADD. You got tatted up. Oh yeah, I got I got a couple. You did? Yeah, not because of the kid. I don't think I got the, the kid, I got this no, after the, the kid, kid tattooed. Yeah, it. yeah. It's impressive. Stick and poke. Yeah. <laughs> Very impressive. It's pretty raw. It's like, Fisher what Price. else did you get? Fisher Price has a new stick and poke system, I heard. That should have been the name of this podcast. Stick and poke? Stick and poke? <laughs> Fisher Price. Fisher, Fisher Price. Price. Yeah, that, oh my God. Yeah. Poke is way better. <laughs> <laughs> Fisher, stick and poke. <laughs> Fisher Price is good. Well, I, I, I got a couple new ones just here and here. And you got a couple new ones, I feel like, on your arm. Uh, we haven't seen each other for a long time. So I, yeah, I got, is that right? I got a chest and a half back. In Whoa. Mexico, too, yeah. What are they? Uh, it's a fox dragon. And then just... A, a fox dragon? A fox dragon. Uh, Is that a type of tattoo? Uh, no, it's a type of dragon. I think uh, you mean a luck dragon. I think maybe never that's ending story. Uh, yeah, but like less Falco. cartoon. Doesn't have the little kids running? Like my, <laughs> my dragon would fuck that dragon up. Why don't you take off your shirt? I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's your second one? That's uh, a cardinal, right? On this is a cardinal. That's beautiful. Uh, and and the other one's a rule. The other one's a rule. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Cardinal rule, baby. Yeah. No, this one's it, it's it's from a book I read, uh, Jitterbug Perfume. Tom Robbins wrote it, and I read, I read it at a point in my life where I'm like, this means so much to me. It, he said this thing called Erdlichta, which is a made up word I found out, and it just means lighten up in German. And I'm mm. like, it always stuck with me. I'm it's like, crazy the Germans up. have the word lighten up, <laughs> <laughs> yes. or maybe they need to say to each other a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, at least uh, <laughs> he's Austrian. He's Austrian. You're right. Yeah. You're right. He's American now. Yeah, governor. Yeah, not anymore. No, actor now. <laughs> yeah, he just became an actor. <laughs> he's good. Yeah, he's, he's, he's good, good as an actor. Oh, you should. Uh, but Blake, you had a tattoo, but you had it removed. You I did? did. I did have it removed. Yeah. It was a sparrow. It was, yeah. <laughs> I would never get that. I hated sparrows so much. <laughs> just like you're keeping me up at night. Yeah. Uh, I did. I had a. I had a tattoo. I got it when I was uh 18 years old and i was like this is gonna be fucking cool i'm and gonna I, love this forever yeah and i went to the tattoo place and i was like that one and really got, off the wall yeah basically oh wow and i got it in uh on my back in between my shoulder blades painful as hell mm -hmm. and uh, that's what it said it said painful it as said hell. <laughs> it's just like painful as hell yeah and then uh i got rough. it uh, yeah i got it removed though uh um, what was the tattoo <laughs> It has zero meaning at all. I was like, this is fucking cool. It was a cross with like a sun behind it. I'm not religious in any way. And you don't like the sun. The yeah, it only the goes out at night. Yeah, I only, yeah, exactly. And it was for that reason that I got it removed. I was just oh, like, crazy. why the fuck do I even have this? That's a terrible place? process to get a tattoo removed, isn't it? You did it, it as well. Uh, How many sessions you do? Uh, luckily, because I'm like super old now, the tattoo is also super old. It was just a wrinkle. They folded it over. Yeah, they <laughs> <stapled> it. <laughs> the uh, I guess like the easiest type of tattoo is uh, black ink. Black ink, yeah. And old. And so I only had to do two. I hear you. Yeah. What about you? I had to do ten. 
Pen. On what was the maybe my girl just wasn't as good. Same story. I was seventeen and I was like, I broke up with this girl and I was like, I'm gonna get a tattoo and she's gonna love it and we're gonna get back together. You did it for her? I did it for her, yeah. Um, oh. And I just like picked two pictures off the internet. No. And then put one on top of the other and like. Just pushed, Googled it. It was a cross back. and it was a sign. <laughs> <and he's> like, <laughs> yeah. This is perfect. Oh my uh, God, that's how tattoos are made. I can't even describe what it was. It was the stupidest thing you've ever seen. It was uh, a it was a wolf dragon. Yeah. But it was big. Where was it? It was like right here. Oh, that right. one. I remember seeing that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was it. like. It inspired like, you. It on inspired the way. Yeah. yeah. It was on the way. It was on the way. It was like, and I wanted it lower, and this chick was like, I'm not going to tattoo you any lower than that. How low did you want it? Full? Uh, like right above the... The schnob. The line, this is just your belt line, but it was above... It was like sat right under my navel. And Be- it was, well, because you've like had it removed bit. now, can I say that the danger was, and I think you said this, is because it was kind of like wings above your pelvis, it looked that. like pubes. It did. From, so. <laughs> like, at the beach. Yeah. You, had, you just couldn't wear sh- your pants high enough or low enough. <laughs> <laughs> which, is, which is what you want at the beach when you're walking by. You're like, oh, is that guy? Oh, a tattoo. Yeah, you know, the yeah. thought process of any stranger trying to figure it out must have been so funny. It's so, and I've told you that story. I took my shirt off one time. It was, uh, I was changing in from then. <laughs> and then uh, I talked to some, uh, some person who saw me changing like a week later. She's like, oh yeah, I thought you just had, <laughs> A lot of pews. <laughs> not, I was not like, the, that's not it. That didn't work that's to get the girl back, it. and it had some other effects, it had too. some other effects. I and can't then, think of a worse place to have to get a tattoo removed from. They called it the reverse tramp stamp. Yeah, the they reverse did? Tramp stamp. Who did? Who called it that? Everyone. I did. I definitely <laughs> did. <laughs> how did. How did you choose that as a location in the first it place? It just felt cool. It looked like a belt buckle. You've seen yeah, it. Yeah, I saw it. tattoo looked like it. And it was just okay. like... Well, what's funny is if you're trying to win a girl back with a tattoo, you'd think you'd have like a tattoo, like a heart somewhere she could see that's like, I still love you. But like it's in a spot that she would only ever see. Maybe that's the reason it's like it's intimate. I don't want her to see it. Right. Maybe that was, I don't know. I don't know your 17 year old self. Uh, Neither do I. Wish I didn't. (laughs) He's Uh. he's gone now. (laughs) Have you considered getting all your other tattoos removed and then getting that tattoo back? back? (laughs) You guys guys feel that way though? Like um, I look back on my life and it's almost like these epochs. Oh, yeah. And those periods of time almost feel like they happen to somebody else. Like mm. you're it's like it's like when I think about them, I think it feels like it's something that somebody told me about that I'm remembering rather than like feeling like I experienced it. Like you agreed to do this podcast today. Yeah, exactly. Like 10 years from now, I'm going to be like, who was that? Guy? Yeah. Why was he no, no, this? totally. Oh, I've heard. I don't know how this is true. And maybe someone will correct me. But I've heard that every one of your cells, like seven years. I say, seven years, yeah. I say this thing you've told me to so do many you? people, yeah. Uh, do you? Do you CC me on it? You credit me? Yeah, I you credit said. you. But they hate it, so they're like, oh, of course he. <laughs> well, exactly. So that, for those of you don't know, it's every seven years, uh, you're completely a new person, and, and that's yeah. why I think when you look back at pictures, of yourself, explain it, explain it a bit like more. Molecularly yeah. Like molecularly, yeah. By the then, cell. your whole body has completely rejuvenated in a seven-year period that you're not even the same person at all. Like that, all those cells are dead. You're truly a right. new person. Which is why like maybe your hair cell, look- you're on a cell in your eye, a cell in your nose. But this gets into the this gets into it. There's a paradox there, which is um, I forget the name of the paradox, but the idea was Occam's the, razor. I think that <laughs> epoch. <laughs> Malcolm Gladwell. This is not the show. No, it's a legitimate paradox where um, the the question is the philosophical question is you have like an ancient boat, and you've got that boat, and it's in a museum, and every year they replace one board on the boat. And they take the original piece and they put it over there and they replace it with a new piece. And they're just like restoring the boat. And eventually they've got two boats, one with the original wood from the boat and one from the replicated one. And the question is, which one is the original boat now? Mm -hmm. Because it's like, is it because of the physical pieces of wood that made the made that be the boat over there now? Or is it like this thing over here that's over the course of time? been replaced with boards but ultimately is the original boat and that's like the same thing as the exact cells, same thing. where it's like hmm. sure you you, you've replaced all of your cells with new cells but does that mean that you aren't the that same person anymore like where i feel like it, par- like i feel like i've got the same name as that person but like when you go back and see like an old video of yourself it's i, I don't know when it's not cringy or you're like well i'm dressed like an idiot i would never wear that like like when i look back on this <laughs> but like we are in the fun shirt uh couch and then oh, man. that's how we got here. We're monotone over here. It's much less like an old shit. Navy over there. Yeah. Yeah. And, right. and we are only doing the lake cross. We're Tommy Bahama. You guys are old Navy. That's right. <laughs> yeah, we're having a fun last bit of summer here. <laughs> yeah. We're, 
matching. I on. like that shirt a lot. It almost looks like made of a towel. It feels like it's made of a yeah. towel. It, it's hot, but it's nice. I like it's hot. It. Like it's an attractive like shirt. It's an attractive shirt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, ice cold. Otherwise, you right. would kill it at Tiff right now. I honestly, and I have a chain. Anyway, I want to get a new chain. What I wanted to ask about this boat theory is like, who said that? I actually want to look that up so that I like get it right. No, but you're right. You're, you're very there, close There's to definitely a paradox about that boat. And it's like, this is like a philosophical Because they named the boat too, I think. Yeah. They're, I'm just going to type in it's boat the paradox. <laughs> well, there's another boat called the Olympic. Is there? It was, it was sister boats, Titanic and Olympic. We talked about this. Did it sink? Every single episode, a conspiracy arises naturally, and I feel like you're Please, about finish to it, finish it, because, like, I need more people to substantiate. Well, the was. Titanic is the one that sunk, but they... Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that about the Titanic. <laughs> yeah, what, what, what was your knowledge about the Titanic? I forgot. Biggest boat. Yeah, that's... I mean, that was World's what it was. Biggest boat. But, like, the, the Olympic was supposed to go out first, and then it, like, didn't. It didn't do its maiden voyage or something mm-hmm. like that. And then they just, like left it on the dock but then titanic went out and it crashed but then people were like but it's right here there i don't actually know it interesting so. mm. okay the it's called the ship of theseus is a paradox regarding regarding identity over time one version positing a scenario in which all the parts of a ship are replaced gradually and one at a time poses this question is the vessel that exists after the replacements the ship uh the same ship as the vessel that existed before the replacements so it's like, are you still the same person after all of your cells have mm-hmm. replaced themselves? That's such an interesting... I thought you were also going to go... Look at that. So the audience can't That's see the this. That's the Titanic. Uh, That's so funny. On the other screen, there is a boat showing. Thank you to our producer, Ziggy, for that. <laughs> uh, that's the Titanic. Three masks. Three, right? yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Great boat, folks. <laughs> it was I think beautiful. that's actually just a tall ship is what they call that. The thing that's interesting is... I thought you were going to say which. I thought you were going to ask like which boat is older because the oh, ones that aren't on the water stopped aging yeah. because you just left them. They're not using them anymore. But the ones that keep getting replaced, you're using them. So which piece? I don't know. I, I thought you were going to go that bit, way. It and gets I was a like, bit crazy. Oh, it's not about that. There's it? a lot of philosophy happening right now with this it's boat. It's true. There's a lot of metaphors. Maybe should we scrap the philosophy talk? Get into Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do some Meisner exercise. Yeah, something a little more dumb. You know? Hey, so yeah. Ian, what's this podcast about? Well, today it's about boats, apparently. <laughs> no, I just wanted to feel like, because half the time we would do a show or something, yeah. and then some of my favorite things is after uh, a show or when you're hanging out with friends and you're having dinner yeah, or having drinks or having breakfast at a diner. Yeah. And that's when people are riffing and they're having fun. And I just kind of wanted that relaxed because I had another podcast before and they've always been premacy. Yeah. But I found that people just want to put a podcast on but while they're doing the dishes mm. or while they're driving and they don't necessarily want to have seen if it's a podcast on a reality show or something having to feel like they mm. watch that some people do but like I, I don't know I felt like sometimes people just want to listen to people having fun riffing hanging out um, and just kind of that thing that happens amongst friends it's like sort of smart list but without the celebrities right <laughs> yeah so like all the appeal is gone <laughs> do you ever are yeah. you ever afraid the people that are listening are going to fall in love with you Afraid? Yeah. Or like hoping? Afraid. Yeah, that's my biggest concern. <laughs> <laughs> that's I'm just afraid if you keep bringing me on, people are going to be like, I love They're going to love guy. you. That's yeah. the thing. Is I they think see that's my relaxed. biggest fear in life, I think. They see that you've got something bigger than yourself well to live for. Wow. It's definitely well-founded. Like, I think that you do have the legitimate concern there. Thank you. Yeah. Is this how you pitching that you should come back? Like, be a recurring guest? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Well, I'm into it. I mean, okay. I mean, it's just because I'm in love with you. Now. Okay, I mean, it's I'm easy. This you just, you just have to be yourself. Do you guys want me to move that table? No, 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 no the tension is too powerful. Just, yeah. move, just move your hand one Well, way. Christian and I haven't seen in forever. Like, Christian and I used to hang out a few times a week. Yeah. Uh, we knew each we other. We lived for, together for, like, a month. Uh, yeah, in Los Angeles. Yeah. We took UCB together, which is a, a comedy school. We got along famously. And then we just, well, I, I won't see you ever again. Well, because you stayed there. Yeah. And I had to come back. Replace me. I honestly, my life would have been very different if I just stayed because I was single, newly single. Yeah. Uh, Like, we, like, I was close to, like, I don't know, like, kissing some people when we were there right there was like some there was some drama when kissing. we were there ian and christian were there. well yeah it was ian it was just ian yeah. uh, no you really did like christian like, was so charming that week like by the end of the second week we were at the top of this like private hotel oh with, like, man the guy who brokered the marvel disney acquisition oh, the billionaire Under, guy yeah uh, with like it was it was amazing how quickly it just felt like we were we were having a, so much fun and just like ending up in interesting situations 
I agree, man. We were just like sort of, we didn't have anything constricting us. We didn't, we, no one knew us. Yeah. We had nothing we, to lose. We had nothing to lose. We're just improvisers yeah. and actors just like doing classes and like working out because we had nothing else to do. Totally. And we woke up at like seven in the morning and did that and like, then just like hung out all day. Uh, what a, what a. But then unfortunately, like when we came back to Toronto, like I've been back five years. Mm. Uh, we see each other maybe once a year. It's crazy. You think it's that little? I th- it might be. I think it is. Like, no, it's a bit more than that, but it's still very one point frequent. It's, it's, it's not a full two. It's really sad. I haven't seen uh, Darcy in a long time. I haven't seen Blake in years. I think I think like uh, people, as you know, people just find a thing totally. They want to continue to pursue, and that takes up a lot of their time. And you're saying it's not me. And, well, I mean, like, look, you do different work than I do to make money, and we all have to do things to make money. Yeah. So sometimes those separate. For a long time, we had the similar things to make money. We had similar kind of. Uh, um, paths to make money we were bartenders back in the day bartenders yeah. actors we yeah. still are actors yeah uh but i've i don't know yeah Man, and you've got I, you've got a kid now of course like there's a million things you got a life you got a family i love i love seeing the beer commercials of the christian when i'm watching a hockey game oh man it's so good is it it's good I, i'm always like i know that guy oh man <laughs> i'm serious that's I back home that. in edmonton i um yeah, I, and you I, were drunk in all those commercials. Yeah, they let me. Oh, drink. yeah, yeah you. Yeah, yeah. It's because you had to get out of your own head. It's like you hadn't yet learned <laughs> yeah. that you should just not care. Yeah, I feel like. Do you feel like? Uh, I know now commercials are just insane. Yeah. Uh, did you ever produce a commercial? Yeah, I've directed lots. Oh, you have? Yeah. It's insane because you are not only talking to the actors and the crew. You're you're answering to the clients and the production company, and you know, everyone's got different notes. And then and then the pandemic happened, and this new technology of Zoom, oh yeah, happened. I mean, well, Skype is like, how did yeah, we Skype's like <laughs> <laughs> they really did like you had you had twenty years to be ready for this yeah. one moment. But the thing that happened is um, when you're directing, they suddenly there's an iPad right beside your monitor, and on that iPad is every single client, every single person from the agency, like it's like pages of, of thumbnails of people who all need to like weigh in. Get there too you soon. Know? Yeah. And yeah. it's like some are like legitimately, you know, giving opinions. Others are wanting to look like they're being yep. involved. So they feel like they need they to They have to put their something. hand up to be like, don't fire me. I don't like their shirt. Speaking exactly. For the sake of that. speaking. So we sit there and you've been in, you've been in this. Have you ever been in a situation or you, you're an actor too. Have you guys all ever been in a, a situation where you're like standing there with like the director and the wardrobe person and they're like, put you in a thousand different shades of the same shirt. They're mm-hmm. like, uh, maybe a little darker blue, or maybe a little lighter blue. Maybe mm-hmm. the, mm-hmm. It's like, and then, you know, multiply that by every single decision that happens. And mm-hmm. you're really just like sitting there trying to be a filter for all of this 75 stuff. 75 voices. And you as the director, like, at what point am I going to like influence anything here? Because really, it's just like, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Change your shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. You're really like just a conduit for exactly for that brand or the marketing agency. The, it's really difficult. It's probably not so fulfilling. Yeah. And the lead up. I mean, I don't need to talk about commercials forever, but like the lead up, there's all of this work that's like you, you know, the, your production company like pitches you as a director to the client. So in order to do that, you have to like come up with some kind of treatment. Like this is how mm. I'm approaching this commercial and this is how I see it. And this is what the casting could be like a lot of work building this big deck, finding visuals and screens, all this stuff. And you give this and you pitch it to the agency, you walk them through it, you're uh, this is how I see it. This is how I see it, and it's like a real, it's like an audition for mm-hmm. a director, mm-hmm. and then they finally choose you, hopefully, and they're like, okay, you're hired, and then it's like there's just like a thing that comes down, and it's like everything that you've just gone through and won the job with gets thrown out mm-hmm. the door, and you're like making something else. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, why did we first go through that whole process? Mm-hmm. And two, if you didn't want everything that I was pitching, then like. <laughs> It's like, funny what are we hearing doing this yeah. too. Like a lot of people know the the struggle of an actor having to audition and all these things, but they don't see that the director is also like working their butt off to try and get that job too. Like showing, you know, your version of this ad. Yeah. And it's like, and in the, just like auditioning in the pitching process, you're not being compensated for any of that mm-hmm. work that you're doing. Same with, same thing with music videos mm. where you're like, you are asked for a treatment you don't you're not guaranteed the job you're competing against three or five or ten other directors and you do weeks of work trying to like 
you win the job and sometimes you don't get the job and you've just spent like all that time and all that creative output that's why commercials are really difficult for like trying to do a lot of them because it's like the same amount of creative output as like a tv show or a movie mm. you know maybe it's not like 25 days of shooting but it's like it's the same amount of you know you Back have to ends, write and you have to work, think yeah. and you have to have motivation and why is this influencing that and why do we choose these colors mm -hmm. of the set over that color it's like a lot it's so much more yeah. pressurized too because say you have like two days to shoot like a five million dollar commercial versus like a month two months to shoot a five million dollar feature yeah every one of your decisions is like completely under a magnifying glass mm -hmm. each line if there's three lines from the actors each line is done 600 times each to the yeah. point where no one understands mm -hmm. the language they're using each each grip is like working their tail off uh moving something to make it look like something somewhere else and like it it's truly unbelievable how much pressure those like two days are for that much money because they have the money they need to spend it yeah and they're they're gonna get people who take it seriously yeah and like kowtow to the yeah. The boss. And, and for all the creatives on set, whether it's like the production designers or the actors or the directors or whoever, um, you also don't get to use multiple days to build something with. Mm. Like you're like it's it must be like a day player on a TV series where you're coming in and you need to like make a impression in that one day with those three lines. <laughs> That's got to be the hardest acting it's to do. The, dude, it's because, the worst to do, the hardest to do, yeah. the hardest auditions to do. Yeah. Give me six pages of memorized yeah. dialogue. Yeah. I'm going to get that 10 because, times over like, a one-line. Way harder. You, can, you mm -hmm. can build like you can build trust and you can build performance and you have something to lean on when it's just like, watch out, radioactive man. You're yeah. like, oh, As shit. you probably know too from seeing tons of audition tapes, like if someone's line is, here's the files, yeah. Christian can't show he's a better actor than me yeah. in that line. Yeah. It's just like, oh, do we like that guy's look or it yeah. sounded yeah. fine enough versus in six pages, he can show he's a better actor than yeah. me. Mm -hmm. That's why when I audition, the most important thing that I consider is not the performance that they're giving in that moment. I'm not like, I'm not looking at their performance and saying, that's what I want to get on set. Mm. Because like none of the, none of what's going on in an audition is setting that actor up for the best performance of that scene. Right, totally, you're in totally. some dumb room somewhere. There's, you're alone. There's not another. Alone. You're not it's listening like, to anyone. There's no like your reader off yeah, camera yeah. is not like it's like not, so to think that this like I'm trying to find the performance mm. of that scene in that moment of the audition is not my is not my approach. I don't know how other directors do it. Well, my it's great that I'm you just said that is, because yeah, everybody yeah. that just heard that who's like maybe new to the scene or not new to the scene been acting for a while. I wish somebody told me that yeah. years ago. Well, I can't speak for other, like there may be, like, especially in commercials, it may be a little bit more of that. But my my thinking is, can they can they act mm. like generally? Mm -hmm. Like right. like if I give some um, suggestions or notes or ideas, are they changing things? Can yeah. they do it this way versus that way? Because yeah. then I know when I'm on set, we can just fucking play. Mm -hmm. That's and the like thing... and there's t and there's something there. Because like if you're if it's just like can they do this line this one perfect specific way is not helpful to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not, and I'd rather find a person who's like, oh, you you can change, you can. You kind of almost want to see the full script within yeah. that two minute scene versus yeah. them just being really good at this. And it's not. Scene. It's yeah. And it's not even really range either. It's like I mean, range. Yeah, you don't want range to think, is good, yeah. of course, but it's more like. It's like, do they have the skills to Adapt. synthesize what we're trying to do and, and think about mm -hmm. and, and react in that way? Because that's what's important. I just watched me. a bunch of, uh, to go to your point, I just watched a bunch of auditions for this uh, film. Um, and I helped kind of chat about decisions. And exactly what you're saying, where like some of the people who got parts, it's not like they were the best actor. They just... They did like two takes or something and one take was something. Yeah. And the other take was completely different. Yeah. And it was the other take, the last choice that they made showed that they could get to a different place on the day. You right. did you guys request that they do two takes? No. 
That's nice. That's cool to hear. They I just never... did two takes, especially if it's a shorter scene. Yeah. They just did two takes. Just to show, and yeah. show like, I, this is how I think I could play it, or I could play it this way. Yeah. Mm. That, for me, was a groundbreaking thing. When I was first starting, especially, like like you said, wanting it so badly, yeah. I used to be like, you get the character, and you're like, oh, I can do this. I know what they want. And you're yeah. trying so hard to like do it right. Fit into a... Fit exactly. yourself into yeah. this. Versus yeah. now, at least, I try, and maybe it's from what we talked about of just like not giving a shit as much or knowing so much of it's out of your control or just being more relaxed as like a performer. Yeah. I don't try to, I now try to show like, hey, this is how Ian would play this role. Totally. If you don't hire me for it, it's not that you're better. I was a shit yeah. actor. It's like, this is my version of this guy. This is what yeah. I would have done. We, we saw some actors just make a choice and the amount of like consideration they got, the choice was yep. so wrong. Yeah. But because they made a choice versus other actors who were just keeping it very simple and didn't make a choice, they were they were at the top of the list. Yeah. This wrong choice. Wow, I love I love because that. they were so compelling. Yeah. It's like they killed that. So we yeah. gotta bring them back. Exactly. Mm-hmm. We gotta see them again. You know. And when you think about it, like we were talking about stoicism earlier, but it's kind of like what are the things that you can control if you're an actor auditioning? Like what are the things you can't control? Because you can't you can't change who you are you Mm -hmm. can't change how you generally look like you grow a beard or whatever Mm -hmm. but like you're still that person Mm -hmm. you can't control that so you can't control like the the stereotype that uh, a casting director or somebody might be looking for like you either are or you're not Mm -hmm. and that's not something you can change but you can change your performance yeah and that's the one thing that you have the most input on and so if you're trying to like what do they want from me as opposed to just this is what I am mm-hmm. that's gonna that's and gonna there's be a more detachment meaningful. from that too because yeah. then you're like oh did I get it right it's like no I just showed this is cool this is what I would have brought to it okay your cast uh, yeah I yeah. I agree your cast already make the make a bold choice they yeah. wanted you regardless yeah. and don't it, you find like being on the other end of that like when Blake a few years ago we were casting a show it, it was really cool to see like I was truly, so close to getting that part <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Let's hash that out. That would be amazing. Well, we can talk about no, that. I mean, no, 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 I don't care. Um, we talked about it at the screening. It was very nice of you to even come as well. You and I talked about that. Oh, you're my friends. It was such a cool... It was so good. But I was I was really happy to be able to apologize in that moment. No, no, no apology needed. I think there was. And like but you I, said... But I get it. I mean, I get it. I, there's no there's Those no were things feelings. you couldn't control. Exactly what he just said about controlling the things you can't control. You're a great actor. You're hilarious. Totally. You could have crushed that part. Mm-hmm. It's just like that, just the character went to somebody else. That's essentially the story. A character yeah. went to someone yeah. else. Yeah, exactly. And that's it. Because that's it. they're different. And they're just different. Yeah. And and it's arguable whether it was the right choice in the end anyways. You but, never know. And it but you becomes... and you never will know, right? Because like, that's the, that's the hard part about like, the creative you just yeah. you try to make art the way you want to make it and you're like did i make the right choice yeah and we'll always question that but i think i feel like ultimately we're past the point of yeah, as professionals and friends it's like if well, we're friends that comes that's gonna yeah. come and first. that's and that's especially if working, no one's a piece but of i shit think that, that i think that that was the that i mean we don't have to like hash it out but yeah. i think that that was actually the 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 thing that stung if like to, mm. the the friendship didn't come first in a way like the respect of like giving a call saying like this is what went down it's it wasn't about the part it was about like the way that it happened right yeah but that's the other thing you've been working together like i i've never been in your sketches you've had series and stuff i've never been in that same like blake directs a lot he's done features he doesn't always cast me it's like the problem with being friends and artists it's like you're not always gonna hook up your friends he doesn't always cast you he always cast me. Yeah. He puts you in everything. Oh, he puts you in everything. No, 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 no. Well, it's the well, not since it's, you it's, buy it's a tattoo, though. I have two. Lost. I have two companies, and one of them makes adult films, and the other. Mm. That's oh, what I, think. <laughs> I have seen your tattoo somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but but that to, to to bring it back a bit at the auditions, I realized, and I, I wish, like you said, Darcy, I wish someone had told Ian the actor this yeah. fifteen mm. years ago. Every person that came in, we wanted them to be the person. So bad. yeah, yeah, we're like we're rooting for yeah. them. You really be, are. You, you're really it's looking for that. Very true. Yeah, it's not trying out to make the basketball team. No, which actors think it is. Like oh, I hope they like me. I hope I'm good. It's like they fucking want you to make their yeah. lives easier. Yeah, man. Yeah, they and like you when they brought you into the room. Yeah, yeah, they, they like want you to be the person. They're not doing Absolutely. you a favor. Yeah, really. Bad. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it is like it. Uh, like the analogy is like the like pining for the girl in high school, where you're like. The more you're chasing, you can't that. relate. You just no. I just got you did too well. I got him. Oh, oh. You don't know. <laughs> you don't know what this is. Like. Yeah, I just got him. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> he's got a kid. He's I got a kid. He's had sex. No, no I just. I was just. No, I. I never got him. 
<laughs> but, it, but it is the thing, right? Like, if you're chasing, then you're not attractive. Uh-huh. And I think it's like that with uh, with anything. And acting is the same thing. If you're chasing so the audition, if you're chasing the part, the desperation of it, this is. I think that I'm going to be the thing that I think that they want. Yeah. Then it, it loses all of the authenticity of it. Yes. It's just like, just be... Be what like, be, I mean, you're gonna, be yeah. yourself, and yeah. I know that's so cliche to say, it, but I think that that's really true. And or or Lita, like not. Whoa! <laughs> I know, but it's <laughs> like no, get back. down, but yeah, no, but it's that's freaking, the foundation of comedy is the callback. Is the callback, and that's yeah. for those of you at home. Uh, there's been a sorry. No, I was just gonna say David Rotenberg, a teacher in Toronto, an acting teacher in Toronto. I, there's no need to name drop. He's just a guy I, I once took classes from. Nice to me. Um, Use promo code Christian Smith. Use promo code if you want. Save six thousand dollars on a <laughs> first day acting class. Uh, all acting classes. That's only ten so percent off. That's only ten percent off. Yeah. yeah, it's six hundred thousand every time. Every time. Right. Uh, no. Uh, yeah. So this guy, he he said something so interesting that I I feel like to this day I still gr- uh, uh, agree with. He's like, as an actor, um, you can't show up jaded. You can't show mm. up pissed off or, or like entitled because people like that don't work people yeah. see that energy yeah. they get it off of you and then like the person who's the same just as good and is just showing up having a nice normal day yeah. it's such a more of an attractive quality to be like you said just like just be yourself you don't have to force anything if it's not you it's not you yeah um like, i feel like this is like a lot with life though in general yeah. like don't go chasing the girl like when yeah. you don't you know, it's just not... let it go and like, yeah. Exactly. Or, or like, yeah, you have to come to terms with like either she likes you or she doesn't like you. That's and, way better. And the totally. only thing that you can control is like how you behave in that situation. Mm-hmm. And, Which is why I just think being yourself, not being like, oh, I, like if I do this, she's going to like me. If I remove my tattoo, she's going <laughs> to. <laughs> Did it work? Or get a tattoo. She hasn't called me since. Uh... <laughs> like, don't be desperate. Christian, you told me that once you found a director who was going to be in the show, you prepared a monologue to do. Yeah, you? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so um, I don't know which one of them is the director here. <laughs> so I'm just going to perform a, a, a couple lines from it. Um, are you guys okay with an accent? I we prefer, prefer it. it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> they do work together. They do, know, but no, I don't have a monologue. I, don't <laughs> I do from theater school have like a Shakespeare monologue. Oh, okay. yeah. every, every, probably could do it. Every actor whatever. generally does. They can find something. it online. They can find it online. Yeah. What's your What's your monologue? Like what? you must have, you must have been asked to perform a monologue at some For point. For theater auditions back in the day, yeah, you did. You had to have a. So what? What did you lean on? What was your? I had one that I learned at theater school uh, that was like my go-to. What was was it? a Canadian playwright. Um, Judith his Thompson. Name I'm forgetting. So Neil LeBute, Judith Thompson. Neil LeBute's American, I think. Yeah, he is. I shouldn't know these no, things. No, uh, Daniel McIver. McIver. Yeah, he's dead. What? No, Daniel Brooks. Stop. All right, RIP. Oh. Sorry, Daniel. Daniel. Um, RP. He's a and, uh, Anyway, but now you don't need that. For a film audition, you never need it. For a commercial audition, I fine. No, for commercials, I actually request it. Oh, yeah. yeah. I got you. I got you. You book yours also, to Shakespeare? It's so cringy that I said, he's dead. Like, it's news. And that's how you say news if someone's passed. Like, <laughs> I'm like someone so did. sorry. He passed. It's like, yeah. he's dead. I, like, I, what a I had some I friends am. that were, uh, they were up at some kind of, there's some kind of roving street festival-y type thing up on Oslington. Right now? All the time. I don't know. They were they were out on the street last last night, and they said that there was this like beautiful band playing, and it was like people were like get, starting to gather around, and it was like this. Every, people were kind of like really energized and excited and kind of clapping, and then they started realizing that it was actually like a wake oh, for no. a person. Oh <laughs> my god! Also, uh, yeah, and, a roving festival is a very interesting. It was a like, weird, an, like, like it was like yeah. it was like it's, like a, a, it's clearly it was, a coffin. Yeah. It was like a big no, drum. <laughs> no, no, no. It was kind of like a street market. I I don't know. They closed down a street. Yeah, and it moves around a little bit. But anyway, like it was. I think there was two things that were kind of odd about that. One, nobody realized that this wasn't like festival entertainment. And well, two, Tiff that is the, on right now. And two, oh, yeah. that the wake chose to like <laughs> go to this like market and kind of perform like street performers. And, and, and so, sad. I think I'm a bit confused. Yeah. So two things were actually going on. Yep. A market was actually happening yep. and a wake was actually happening. Yep. It wasn't someone misinterpreting a nope. wake for a market. Nope. Because yeah, that's what I... Uh, I'll take two pounds of the uh, black suits. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. yeah. That's it, wild. It was really wild. Yeah. Sorry. Your your comment about uh, him. He's dead. It was oh, kind of right, made yeah, me yeah, think yeah. of that. It's like a celebration. It's drunk like, people. When they think it's like lyrics, he's dead, please. This is my father's death. Everyone's like, yeah. 
Snap. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. Wow. It was very weird. I like that. Yeah. Do the same when I die. Uh, take me. Somewhere. Take you down the street. Just down Ossington. Like, yeah. I do um, want like a New Orleans style kind of. Um, it was that off. kind of band apparently. You know what I want? No joke. I want you guys to put my coffin in the water. Take the thing. Take the lid Let off the of seagulls it, get it. And then drift me out and then do the thing where you fire the arrow. I try to get you. <laughs> and then just. Like, Maybe yeah. sick though, but none of us can make the shot. <laughs> no, so we'll like, make it. Everybody's trying, and then, and then you get too far, and you still can't hit it. <laughs> I'm just floating around. We have to like bring you back <laughs> and then let it. It's an it. enclosed lake. We, we didn't pick the ocean. <laughs> we just like oh. his coffin that's on fire goes to someone's dock on the other side. <laughs> it's just on darts of fire. He's yeah. fine. His do body's. You, fine. Do you guys want to be buried, cremated? What's the what is your plan? Do you have a plan? Shot into space. Shot into space. God, I bet I, you it is your plan. <laughs> I just need this podcast really to make space <laughs> money. So Bezos, if you're listening, six hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, I I always thought as a kid, uh, cremated, but mm-hmm. maybe that's just because my a lot of my family's cremated. Okay. Um, but I don't know. Maybe like turn me into a statue. Let people look at the bones. Like fill you up like with stuff like cement. You. That's what kills me. <laughs> and then cremate me after that. <laughs> but you can't burn cement, so it's like kind of tough. Yeah. 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 I don't know. What about you guys? Stars? Yeah, I had a big fear of being buried alive when I was a little kid. So I was like, oh, burn me. So like, even if you guys... <laughs> burn me alive. If you guys I'm if not guys, afraid of being burned alive. If you guys aren't sure that I'm dead, definitely stick me in the <laughs> oven. Like... Uh, Do not bury me. Yeah, I think we made it. The situation where all of us are going to be met with not being sure you're dead or not. <laughs> okay, been for eight days. <laughs> yeah, I so, I'm my barium. Yeah. We've been playing... Wait. This, this band has been playing for like three hours. <laughs> yeah. Is he dead or not? Yeah, He's, I think. If we're ever not we sure to. that you're dead, I hope so one of us has called a doctor at some point. <laughs> okay. There's been a hospital involved. <laughs> <laughs> Christian, what's your plan? Do you have a plan? I, really, I, I keep going back and forth, too. I'm a bit like, I also wanted to donate my like organs and to someone like a ship to story. S- so they don't know if like, right. you donated enough Just organs. Is slowly that replace you with different organs. Oh, that's organs? very funny. Like, if someone comes to me, Christian? honestly, I would love that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but they're going to have a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> they, they wake up one day and just like where's my checkered shirt where's my shirt? did i own one they just like they for some memories? reason have to yeah yeah they're just imbued ha- has having a kid make you think more about that <sighs> we're going there yeah you know what uh it you know what has made me think of death in a practical way Mm. because one um, less mouth to feed. one less mouth mal- <laughs> 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 by family. myself Good. She doesn't have to pay for my math. <laughs> um, no, it, like if like when I happens go, if you pass, what, what happens if I pass? Mm. I've already had like all these like I have life insurance and stuff like that. And do you think you, I think you do that just when you have a kid? I don't know. I did it, and um, I just think like if she doesn't like uh, end up with someone or marry someone or whatever, and if we don't have another kid, it's just her alone. Yeah. Mm. So I feel like that is more scary. Like having my daughter just be in the world. I mean, I'm sure she'll be great. She'll be fine. We'll raise her hopefully good. I don't know. Hopefully good. Um, I think that's putting a like, oh crap. Right. Thing in, in me. There is kind of like a longevity, like a, like a, like she is going to continue living beyond you. Yeah. But she's part you and part your wife. Yeah. And there is kind of like a, a feeling of like, um, what's, what's the word when you, if you live forever? Lo- uh, immortality. Legacy. Immortality. There's like right. a little bit of immortality there where it's like she's carrying. Yeah, I just in jeans. I really love that she's going to go on without, like, yeah. Not without me. I, I want to be there for every sec- second of the time, but I would want her to live on way long, obviously, billions of years after me. Yeah. And like. Millions? Yeah, man. She'll find something now. She'll be a scientist. <laughs> You're on, you shit. got her on a healthy diet. Yeah, there, man. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's so much to talk about. We might raise her vegetarian. I don't know. Cool. Oh, oh not even tell her that meat exists. No, we, she's already eaten meat. We've can, done all the stuff for allergies and meat and stuff. Yeah. But like... Can I can I give you a piece of advice? Please. That's <laughs> a guy without a kid yeah. talking out of his ass. Yeah. Two kids I knew yeah. when I was a kid. And I was vegan for two years. I'm so sorry. But this is not... I eat meat. Yeah. Okay, but but they used to... They weren't allowed McDonald's. That was like a thing. Oh, losers. And they weren't allowed TV. And when they used to come to my house... They would beg me just to play video games <laughs> and order and get McDonald's. And so like, and then by the time we were a little bit older, they were also very, very bright. I won't name who they are. They're still to this day, really nice guys. Winklevoss twins. 
They, they, were, they may have made Facebook. <laughs> And Zuck <laughs> stole it from them. Because Zuck had McDonald's as a kid. It wouldn't surprise me if you were friends with the Wigglebots twins, by the way. I just look like the third Wigglebots yeah. twin, which is like a little <laughs> uglier, the one who didn't make the, ro- the rowing team. I was like, strong I'll play Super Smash Brothers. Yeah. Um, wh- what I'm saying is there a fear if you raise a vegetarian, she's just going to be like, I want to I want to go to the camp. So I think, I, think we're, I, think, I think we're going to do, I think we want to let her choose at some point. We'll be like, hey, what do you want? This is what we've done for you, but if you want that, go do it. If you're sick of cheese tasting like rubber, what is the, yeah. What is it, like you you eat meat? What is the uh, intention behind it? Is it health? Is it something else? What's I think the... morally, for, okay. for my yeah. my partner's point of view, I think yeah. like killing animals. I don't think she's, she's a part of it. It's yeah. also worse for the environment to just like yeah. kill there is animals. As someone who eats meat now totally. There's no question that's true. It's like a thousand times better for the earth than eating meat. Oh yeah, to eat veggie. Yeah, and I know, and I know, and I don't cook meat at home, but I eat. I like I, I eat meat everywhere yes. else. And even like killing the animals, obviously, like people are like, oh, but if you had to kill your own food, would you still eat meat? And I'm like, no, no, I would. Like I'm not gonna kill. I actually recently got my. <laughs> I actually, I actually recently got my gun license wow. for that very reason. Takes it out, shoots Darcy <laughs> yeah. in the head. Like I, I have no, I have no like. Do you think the, you could do? Have you killed an animal? I have no desire to, uh, like become a hunter. Like that's not going to be like part of my identity. My brother, hunts. too much work. <laughs> no, but I, 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 like I, I honestly, I honestly feel like we've gotten so far away from like the meat that we buy at the store is. It's the meat proce- that we buy at funerals in the street. <laughs> <laughs> it's pro- <laughs> it's processed to the point where it's intended to not even seem like it's a f- what it is, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Like it's packaged up really nice. It's red. It's no perfect. It's yeah, exactly. And it's not even called like what it is. It's called beef instead of like dead, dead cow, cow or some yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so I just feel like I want to have the experience of going out stalking an animal going through with the process of killing that animal and eating that animal and wearing its skin and wearing its skin like Leonardo DiCaprio and the Revenant yeah but but the point it the point being is like to connect myself with where the food comes from and I know I know that our food comes from farms I killed this rug you killed this rug I killed this rug Killed it with his credit card at Ikea. <laughs> That's right. But like, do you get what I'm saying? Like, 100%. Like I, the connection of, like, I feel like the problems that we're talking about environmentally, whatever, mm-hmm. like that's, the, it's rooted in a disconnection farming. from what it is. Like, we don't, we don't recognize the, this is, if we all knew that it was like, you know, Bessie over there, like we would feel differently about eating it in either we would eat less of it. Or we'd have more respect for it. It wouldn't just be like commodity, like throwing burgers in our mouth. Yeah, I'm not, that's not a comment. On, like those. No, I, I, burgers, honestly, but... if I had to do it, I don't think I'd be able to eat meat. Like I used to think that people who had never worked at a restaurant should not be allowed to eat at a restaurant. Mm. Like, you ever go with a friend who's rude to a server? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or like, and it's just like you can tell they've never done it. I, I think it should be like Israel. There's one year. Oh yeah, no one, one year, year of required like, hospitality. Exactly. Is yeah. that what happens in Israel? You have to serve in the military. That's Finland. Well, there's a bunch of places. Well, we'll see. <laughs> Korea, <laughs> yeah. Finland, Israel. Names every country. Uh, Russia now. Russia now? Is that true? Well, they have the conscription, so. Whoa. Okay. But like for that, but for restaurants, it's like before you're allowed to go be a dick, you have to do a year of service, service as a server. Get out. Dealing with assholes and then you can have empathy next time that yeah, you go. This isn't eat. actually a thing. This is Ian's just No, saying, this is my, when I'm part of this. Would like and then happen. why Israel then? Why'd you choose Israel? I was just picking a country. With an <laughs> of the military. He, he was saying that Israel does the military. He thinks that in Canada we should Got have it. we should have that same requirement, but to work in hospitality so that we can have empathy for the people. And then no one would be a dick to service. Yeah. Same thing. Blake's saying you go out, you have to kill your own animal, maybe and before you you're allowed eat to meat. eat chicken. Yeah, exactly. I love it. It's it's it's, it's a trip. I think you're right, man. I mean, I, I, like we have a little toy for the baby. Yeah. It's a little chicken, and we yeah. go, oh. Chicken, chicken, and, and we try to make her do the sound. Head up. And then we feed her later. We, you can't name it something else. Here, have some chicken. Uh, it's really trippy. It's, right. It doesn't make us comfortable, so we don't feed her chicken anymore. Because gotcha. it's like, that's messed up for her, but also messed up for right. us. We're like... You're right. It makes it real. Right. It makes it seem like a pet or like a... Yeah. Tw- like... But I think I think that it's like... I think that this, that same facet, whether it's eating, whether it's meat, like where does, where does meat come from? I think it's true. Dead animals. Really? So they say. Okay, I'll I'll trust you. Here's the conspiracy. But, but like so the Titanic. <laughs> but think about like I think it's true in everything. It's like and and as we've continued developing, it has that that same idea has expanded into other things. Like mm. Amazon just shows up at your door. 
where did this actually come from? Who actually made this thing? Why? Like, well, it's just so convenient. We're mm -hmm. not recognizing we don't have a connection to the process that it took for get, to get mm -hmm. this thing in the mail or to like, um, like, like the pl plastic water bottle or something like that. Like if you knew that when you put that plastic bottle in even the recycling bin or the garbage bin or whatever, that that was just going to end up in your neighbor's pool you probably would probably use less water. In my case, I do just throw all my garbage over the fence <laughs> into my neighbor's pool. Yeah, yeah, but that guy's a dick. But he's a bit of a dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you get know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. No, you're right. Everything feels like it's just we've just we've just disconnected ourselves from the process of where all of these things come mm -hmm. from. That and it's made it very convenient for us. It's like the best like situation well, also, that you can any have... human has ever had. But mm -hmm. it's like by far. But that ultimately is what's at the root of the problem yeah even health wise but like you could look at it in a positive way like if you wanted a glass of pineapple juice tomorrow yeah like you're not the one picking that pineapple you're not exactly. flying that pineapple across the country exactly. you know the amount of hands that actually have to touch it yeah um allows us to live in this abundance but also you're right we completely don't think of it and it's not like it's not a, i'm not to, it's not to say that like we should just like give all of that up like tomorrow but I think that having the understanding and the like that's the first step towards fixing having it. a little more perspective even yeah and that's perspective. and that's where the hunting thing comes from it's like I don't intend to like exclusively get my food from hunting but I think I need to have the experience of that so that I can connect myself to where that food is coming from totally. Christian does a cool thing can I if you don't mind uh, I don't know what you're about to talk about when you were You've vegan for those two years Every time you didn't eat a meat dish, you went up and killed an animal and just left it. Yeah, I left it for someone else. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, just, yeah. To, just to say I could. Right. <laughs> so it wasn't right. Like you're still making animals. the impact, you just didn't like the taste. I died. It wasn't the taste. I love the taste. Okay. <laughs> I just didn't like the animal. <laughs> <laughs> and they were exclusively raccoons. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Just oh. tastes so good. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. No, uh, but we, we want to let the baby choose. We want like okay. her to... You know, like if you want meat, you can. Have, but if will you, don't you call want her it, the baby even when she's eighteen? I feel like I do that already. Yeah, with the like baby. kids who are older than her, like an eight-year-old. Like, look at that baby. <laughs> that was big. <laughs> that was a big. I do, and the parents are like, "What? Big you see baby. the babies in the NFL draft?" <laughs> <laughs> are we okay? Are you are you a person who is going to um, continue to say your babies? Yes. No. Well, not you though. Christian. Oh yeah, then no. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Are you going to, uh, when someone asks your baby's age, are you going to continue using months beyond like year one? 69 months old. 60, no. Uh, my baby's 15 months. My, name, my baby's She's 16 months right now. She's 16 months? Mm -hmm. when, so, when you it's not even a year and a half. What do I say? A month and four, a, day, a year and four months old? Yeah. yeah. When do you no, she's a, she's a, I, I feel like she's a year until she's a year and a half. Yeah. And then she's, she's two. two. And then after two, you it's only two go and a half years. Agreed. No half. Not when you no, drop the, after. But my, my personal opinion. <laughs> Look, honestly, I was of the same opinion. Yeah. And then and then you realize their their progression is so much right. within months oh, okay. at that age. Yeah. And it's I like ten percent of her life every month, kind of thing. If she's I mean, 10 months. I mean, look, I'm not a math guy. That's not a, that's, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot more. Like uh, uh, six months for you is nothing at this point. Yeah, but, dude, but for the baby, like, she completely is a, a full being. within a week. She becomes a different person. Takes so, you seven years. Takes me seven to ch change a little bit to yeah, change up yeah. my shirt. So, uh, but what will you say? You'll say twenty two months, or what point does that end? In, I think like, I think after the first years, or after, once she gets to two, you get rid of it. Two, because two I think months. all the mo the biggest biggest like uh, uh, evolution happens within the first two years okay. in terms of mentally. Uh, so much happens. So much happens. Like she went from crawling to walking within a week. Never walked before, started crawling on her hands and knees, and it was now then just running around. And you're like, Get up, okay. She understands language so fast. She With, told you about Occam's razor. Dude, she taught me <laughs> yeah. about Occam's razor. <laughs> She's teaching at uh, Ryerson later. At oh, sorry. She prefers TMU. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, did they change? Did they actually change the name? Yeah, Toronto, Metro Toronto oh, Metropolitan oh, oh, University. Okay. That's funny. I, I didn't realize that. Uh, recently someone was like, I'm in the fashion program at TMU. And I went, oh, I knew some people at the fashion program at Ryerson. That's so funny. So I showed that I did. That sounded like a, a joke you were doing no. to them. <laughs> I guess I wasn't. You a, would be that good. but that Why do you know a 21-year-old in fashion? It, this story takes place back in, I knew them back in the day. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't know them anymore, but I hope they're doing well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with, a, with a look at the camera. Is your partner still vegan? No. Aw. Yeah. She was vegan for a long time. She was vegan for like five years. What happened? 
it wasn't even like there wasn't ever a thing like we're craving meat. There was never like yeah. a, a big moment of that. Um, we were on a trip, and I think we decided for the trip it was going to be a little bit too difficult for us to ask for vegan stuff. Where was it? Where's we were the in trip? Mexico. Mm. And then we were like, it felt douchey even just being like, is there eggs? Is there cheese? Like there was just a lot. And then it just slowly, we just started eating it again. Mm. And then when we came home, we just continued. Capitalism um, got you. You got, won. And gets you. Me not knowing enough Spanish. No huevos. No queso. <laughs> no carne. No carne. And me- Mexican cuisine is notorious, notoriously good at vegetarian. vegetarian. Yeah. <laughs> it's very good at vegetarian. Yeah. yeah I feel but like, hard at vegan. I feel like Mexican mm. and Indian does really good vegetarian. Oh, the best. Really good vegetarian. The best, I feel like. And good yeah. vegan. You can get like, you know, I, I actually thought that there was there's a lot of, we're lucky enough to live in Toronto, a lot of amazing vegan restaurants here. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't that I missed flavor because people are like, oh, could you wait for bacon again? I'm like, there was a lot of other really good stuff. It just it just kind of fell off. Also, health-wise, um, this is completely my own laziness or my own vanity. It was harder for me to get the amount of protein. And I know you can do it. Like PB and there's a lot of vegan options. As clean as a chicken breast. Yeah. With no carbs, no fat versus I had to eat a lot more. So it was just my own vanity. I was eating a lot of carbs. I noticed I was a little heavier as a vegan. Mm. And I'd like... It, uh, I'd lost a little bit of definition and stuff. That mm. so, just pure vanity wise, I'm like, I love how open you are in your podcast. <laughs> well, this is the only podcast in the city where you get environmental things. You get acting, philosophy. Acting. philosophy. Yeah. Well, acting. I don't know if that was just because of Tiff. Why we talked a bit about acting, or just yeah. the guests being actors and having a director on the show. But um, well, because I hate talking about acting. Do you really? No, you I, I, I don't. You know what? I don't hate talking about acting. I think I don't like. I think I don't like. People who take themselves so seriously, and I think a lot of those people are actors. Yeah, I think it's like you just don't, you don't have to take yourself so seriously. Right. I know so many doctors who don't take themselves so seriously. Right, mm-hmm. that but, sounds like a brag. But, I know like two doctors, so I, I don't know why I said that. And how one's much, a clown. And one's a clown. How, how much <laughs> money do they make? Oh my god! Yeah, that's I was saying that to, to Blake the other day. We were talking, and uh, doctor is the only position where like they still make five hundred thousand dollars a year, but it's not like there's no judgment of like. When you meet like a banker or yeah. a lawyer, it's sometimes like, oh, but like you kind of might be an asshole. But with yeah. the doctor, it's like, that's good for you. Yeah, 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 you yeah. Re- I'm really get... glad you're making yeah. a lot of money. It's yeah. really noble. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's really, you're saving lives. They still have the Ferrari. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's They're true, kicking actually. Ass. We should all be doctors. I was thinking about going to a Caribbean medical school. Six that's months. For what? For, <laughs> for nursing. <laughs> Just to meet more doctors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just find I, I, need to find, I need to find a couple doctor friends. Mm. yeah i think mm. that's the plan mm. i don't know i th- i think about that do you have you have you taken any career like it's almost existential in a way where it's like i feel like i'm in a little bit of a midlife crisis in that way where it's like i've been putting so much effort into trying to make films trying to mm. be a director trying to do this and that and i have had some success but also like i'm looking into the future and being like what's get, what's this industry going to be like in five years what's going to be like in 10 years and that's should i be fun, like yeah. thinking about changing something now before before it's like i spent another 10 years doing it and then realize and it's even more too late to like make an uh make an the adjustment pivot. or something or maybe not i don't know but uh yeah i've had similar what. thoughts in the same vein but yeah. if the apocalypse happens who am i gonna I think it's when. shack up with directors or doctors actors you know they but pretend actors, to like, stitch you up. Actors just, can be anything you want them to. Be. Like sometimes I'll I'll lay in my bed and I'm like, how useful will I be? What skills do I have? And that's well, you fuck, how I you built this place, decisions. didn't you? That's interesting. So it's just like, but yeah, I'm, but that's that's my point. I'm not gonna go find a digital marketer when right. shit hits the fan and go. All but right, what if shit doesn't hit the fan? To play, then, then we're fine. Then this is all. It's mm-hmm. all good. Fugazi. Well, I mean, it's not a raw. By the time we're, or when we're recording this podcast, or when you're recording this podcast. Oh, yeah, I haven't hit record yet. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's so many strikes happening in yeah. the States, SAG, WGA, uh, and we have an actor. Not the stri- DGC. So that is a director. DGA. Still out there. Yeah, taking DGA. the dirty money. But even us here in Canada, we have a, a, a commercial strike. It's horrible. It's over 500 days at this point. Mm-hmm. Wow. So you, you think about it. Our industry is challenged greatly right now, especially with the evolution of AI in creating content. Mm-hmm. So it's, love I think word. it's very. I love the word content is one of my favorite words. Isn't it so interesting? Content creator. It just also it's content become, just means like verb. Like it's just like a thing. It's become Stop. thing. It's become yeah. the like. 
Yeah. Uh, what's what's that word like? Spark word, keyword. Key. Like oh, like when people a few years ago were like quarterly projections. Buzzword. Synergy. Buzzword. 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 Yeah. Synergy. Buzzword. Yeah. It's the buzzword of now. It feels like everyone creates content. Ever content is king. Content is. Mm, have you noticed someone says content is queen? Mm. I saw a commercial. <laughs> shout out to Barbie. Go see it. Bitch <laughs> up, 75 up. times. Oh my Learned God. a lot. Uh, I did, we, I, that I movie actually, was great. I, I did love it. We all did love it. We did see it a couple times. <laughs> but uh, I saw a commercial the other day and it had, you know, like Peter, truck driver. It was like Cynthia, content creator. It was like, I'm like, oh, this is just like a normal job now you're using to relate to people. We, insane. Even like filmmakers. Uh, Blake and I... Do you know any? Yeah, oh, not anymore. I know content creators. <laughs> I got an email that instead of saying filmmakers, they changed it this year to, hey, content creators. So it's like, even your film is just content. Yeah. yeah. That's it, so diminishing. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And then the whole thing with HBO Max and them changing, like, did you hear about that with the credits? It, no. You would, no. Turn on a, you would turn on a film on HBO Max and you know how they have like director, writer, all the credits? It just says content creators and then like a list of, or like create, wow. yeah, content, oh, not even like, content separated. creators, not even separate, not director, writer, et cetera, et cetera. It's just like a block of people's names. That's good for me. I shot some stuff at the gym today. I'm you're right now the director with, of content uh, creators. You may win an Academy Award. Darcy. Yeah. You're the director Scorsese. of <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. All content Levinson. creators. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. It's That's uh, stupid. But I think it's the connotation of like the negativity of it, of that word, right? Like it does feel diminishing. And then I think that's why people are sensitive about it. Just it's so like, broad. It it's so broad and it's fleeting. Content feels credit, like it's a three second clip on TikTok. Deserve. Get it out there. Get another one out there. Yeah. 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 Which is... How, how do you buy it? Because you were fairly early into the YouTube shift that's been happening. Blake and I have been talking about it recently as well. But I found that like five years ago even, to be a YouTuber was like exclusively a, a Logan Paul or like a mm. vlogger. It was a very different thing. And people who put their stuff on YouTube, it was not like where now every comedian is putting their special on YouTube. Everyone's running traffic to YouTube. Like, I think YouTube's almost becoming a better place because there's no gatekeeper. It's not mm. like a studio, like, you know, having to get your show. If you want a show, you can make it. This podcast, yeah. you know, you, you, it's permissionless in the sense that good and bad, you can just hit upload and it's there. But I don't know. I'm finding. Have, have you noticed that in the last two years, you guys have been doing with your channel that like it's shifting? Or I think it's. Um, I think creating content, YouTube, TikTok, Reels, whatever, is the new sort of um, way to keep uh, up. Like it's the new promotion. Do you think it's, it's what doing a play was? Yeah. Years ago? So like, for instance, I have a couple of friends who are stand ups, and they say if you don't have like your sets online, mm -hmm. you do not get people at your show. Yeah. Like the whole, like currency now is your, and most of the time it's crowd work because you don't want to burn your actual set. So it's like, if you don't get crowd work totally. online, people are not going to come see your show. Matt Reif got huge just from posting his crowd I work. I met Matt mm -hmm. Reif like six years ago in LA, just at like a mic. Yeah. And it's been surreal to watch in the last two years. Him, he's got the second biggest show after Taylor Swift selling up 600,000 seats. He, he's opening for Chappelle? Is he? Yeah. yeah. I'm not surprised. I mean, he's, a, he's an arena comedian now. All from filming, putting it on TikTok. Like, Dude, none of his material. It's yeah. all crowd work. Which is great because then you save it for the show. Exactly. So I people think, are new. It's new every time. Or even so. Andrew Schultz, he put his stand-up special oh, yeah. on. Like These guys, whether you like their comedy or not, have kind of kicked the door open for other people to kind of make their own destiny. Well, they've sort of made the bar. They have sort of wrote or been a part of creating the line of which... I someone someone told me that they've only heard of me uh, because of some of the like the quick videos I make online, mm. and they're like, I love everything you do. I'm like, you have That's no idea about what I do, but the fact that you saw me do one funny thing, now I'm in their head as very funny. But it's validating in the sense that what I like about this stuff with the internet, if you do a killer improv show or a killer stand up set, the 50 people who saw it that night mm. may have loved it. But beyond that, it doesn't dead. live. Yeah. But by putting it on the internet, someone may find that video nine months from now in the middle of the night and, and have a laugh. It's like, like you're talking mm -hmm. about your kid and legacy. It's like you're able to access more people mm -hmm. through the work you did one day. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think that's 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 really cool. Or you, like you can watch The Godfather or whatever movie mm -hmm. right now on Netflix. Yeah, I think I think we have to understand like, I think the filmmaker content creator thing is really interesting because content creator, you can't. They still did it. They still made it. As much as filmmakers, 
like there's there's a definite there's a longer process into making even a short film versus a feature film like some people years 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 some months 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 sometimes you just pick up a thing me and you shoot a tiktok and it gets more views than that film ever would in its entirety right. so it's like there's a there's a disdain for content itself i think content the, the, the topic of content creation is just so uh fleeting and nonsense but i think to create something it's it's how people are digesting things now it's how people are ingesting so like we as a society have to recognize that this is new currency like you can make a film and be excited about it and and be eager to share it and i will myself but like you also have to understand and not put down the people who have realized what's true in the world right now how people are taking things in and go okay i can't be jaded because i just didn't do it as fast as those kids mm -hmm. it's like honor what's happening do what you want to do but like i find when people go like yo screw the screw that dude who just i'm like man like he did it it's way easier to say oh mm -hmm. fuck that person that's embarrassing that stuff they made while you're sitting at home not doing anything and watching yeah. their stuff yeah. on quick like and repeat. resenting them and resenting for them being like successful i want to be that divine guy get off get off your couch man get up <laughs> do your thing yeah but you spent all day on the phone you anyway on the phone anyway i mean now it's more apt than ever yes it is more <laughs> yeah. apt than ever oh. That's why I get paid. Thanks for joining the podcast today. That yeah. Was... <laughs> and what's your podcast called, Ian? I know. It's been right up in my eyes the whole time. Well, you're right. We could wrap. We, we, we might as well wrap it up. That seems pretty organic. This is cool. Uh, Darcy, any thoughts? No. Thanks for coming out. Uh, Blake. Do you have any closing thoughts? Uh, Blake's <laughs> in town for TIFF. Blake's a director, producer. He's in town for TIFF. Uh, can they find you anywhere? You're, you're kind of no, you really can't. I actually got rid of everything. It was making me very sad. Can they watch your uh, anything else you want to? Yeah, no, nope. not yet. No, it's okay. it's not even content. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is content. And Christian's an actor, comedian, easy to find everywhere online. Easy to find, so easy, easy to, find. to find. You Google his name. Google my name on the third guy that comes up. <laughs> uh, Fun, uh, funniest man alive. Funniest man alive. That's what I heard. So my mom said that, uh, and even now she doesn't believe it anymore. Um, <laughs> Did she let you choose to eat meat or not? Or she still controls your diet. She controls my yeah, diet. But you, yeah. you have a daughter now, so she's she, it, all that matters is her opinion. Yeah, on my daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> on daughter. <laughs> no, my daughter's everything. Uh, you could, I don't know. Uh, you it just ends on a sad note. Of my just being like, everything. My daughter is everything. I live for her. Um, follow her account, not follow, mine. <laughs> yeah, Christian, Christian Smith, yeah. uh, Christian and Nat on YouTube. Christian V Smith. Really selling it. I don't know what else I'm doing. I'm. I don't know. You know. No, no, I'm just, I'm just teasing. I'm I don't right. even know what I'm doing. Make some There's always something baby. happening, baby. Yeah. There's always something happening. Always something. And and sometimes that thing is just taking my baby for a walk. Don't you, come You film that. that now? Don't, no, I don't film that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I saw somebody teaching his daughter how to ride a bike yesterday. And she kept almost falling over, but he was also trying to film her at the same time. This is our time. It's so <laughs> stupid. And it's like, it was up on King as well. Just like busy streets. She's trying to weave in between people. Her life's going to be like, why do you have that like scar? And, and he's like <laughs> following her with his phone and she's like almost falling. And he's trying to catch her. And then she almost runs into, it was just like, what are you we? You should have filmed that. That what would have gone viral. What are we fucking doing right Christian, now? Christian, yeah. you find, before we go, that exactly reminded me. You've had a baby for two years now. Will no, you be no. bummed? <laughs> Uh, 16 months. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. 24 months soon. <laughs> uh, that Will you be bummed if you go a whole baby cycle without her going viral once? Like there's all this <laughs> Charlie bit my finger. What's a baby cycle? Nine months? Like you have a baby that doesn't even go viral. You probably filmed her a billion times in your life now. There's probably more pictures of your kid on your phone than like pictures that all of us exist together. Oh, a thousand percent. The yeah. only photos on my phone are my baby. At least give you one viral video. <laughs> <laughs> there are some great videos of her doing some stuff. I'll show it to you after. She says one of our friends' name, and it's she says Shargel. Not bad. Can't say a lot of shout words. Shout out to Shargel. Shargel Rasul. Follow him on all the content. At Bill Clinton. At Bill Clinton. At Bill Clinton. Yeah. Didn't do it. No, I don't want her to do this stuff. She's yeah. gonna do it if she wants. This won't be around. There'll be something better. It'll be like hologram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not podcast. I hope you actually. I, her to, I just don't want her to do this podcast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And she won't. Yeah, I she have won't. no more babies on this. She show. tried to stop you coming here. Today. Yeah, I know. She was really against it, dude. If in fifteen years or twenty years, if people are still plugging their Instagrams on comedy shows, <laughs> the world is in a bad place. <laughs> Where do you think it'll be? Will it be anything? It'll be Darcy with the zombie apocalypse person. This has been a Pagliacci podcast.